Hey guys, this is uh, my um, generator enclosure that I've built um, with a lot of help from other uh, videos uh, on YouTube. Um, I, I really wanted a whole home generator, but didn't really uh, want to crank out the cost of a Generac um, and saw a pretty good deal on a, on a, a 12,000 watt generator at Lowe's. Um, but I thought I'd make this video to kind of put everything together. Uh, some, a lot of the tips that I found. Um, this is a, a, basically an outdoor shed I got on Wayfair uh, for pretty cheap. I think it was like $189. Typically it's, you know, in the 300s. Um, this specific generator um, is a hybrid generator, so it'll do gas um, and uh, propane. And in a lot of videos, they kind of show uh, essentially going in and there's a propane regulator back there. And they see, they have you going in and, and putting in a different uh, hose and other things into the carburetor and this and that. and. I really wanted to keep this so that the generator uh, didn't look like it had been changed from the factory settings, um, you know, with holes or anything like that. And so what I did is I took that same hose, got the kit, and I'll put it on the YouTube uh, description, but um, this is a, a kit that they sell for generators um, that are propane. And so basically, the kit came with this piece here, which is the regulator. And then there was this hose right here that actually is normally plugged into the propane regulator down there. So it was essentially able to just unscrew that and screw that into the natural gas generator and not make any other modifications. The choke, I believe, is left half open. When you're using natural gas, you really don't have to move that choke around. Um, so you basically just leave it in that position um, so in terms of this propane, um, regulator, most people have drilled it into the side. And again, I really didn't want to uh, make any permanent changes to the generator. I did buy a four year warranty for the generator, which was, I think it was like another $200. Um, so in total, I think the generator was around $1,400. Uh, anyway, so I found these, um, brackets, uh, that I actually use for some other things. Uh, and so it holds it pretty good. Um, you know, it doesn't make any permanent holes in it. And so uh, that's kind of an overview of the generator itself. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and talk about a few other things uh, here and as we transition. So kind of back to the outside of the enclosure, as you can see, um, we've, I've made one port here for the natural gas quick connect line. Uh, I had a plumber run a natural gas line and, and um, put a quick connect fitting here. And um, this allows me to essentially um, disconnect this and put it in there if I need to move the generator somewhere else or uh, without you know, making any changes to the other side of it. Um, probably a little bit of overkill here, but um, I saw somebody else use one and I just decided to go that route. Um, in terms of the box itself, I, I really tried to minimize any um, openings in the box. And so I've got a, uh, AC vent cover uh, that I put here and then you can see on this side is the uh, attic fan and these actually open up when you turn the generator on um, because the power goes to the fan and the fan pushes open this. Um, this was another thing that I spent a lot of time on. Decided to go with um, essentially a, an exhaust port that was uh, pre-manufactured. Um, I, this thing got so hot, I really didn't want to take any chances of, of something burning up and whatnot um, or causing a fire. So um, you can see here in the back of the generator, that hose basically clamps on to where the muffler comes out and then goes into this piece, which is built to take uh, the hose here and this is essentially a muffler hose. And, uh, and then I, I built some extra space around in there, um, you know, in the, in the 
in the cement board that I used. I used cement board on these sides. It's good for insulation, but it's really good for fire resistance. And so what I noticed is generally the hot, the generator is not that hot, but what is hot is this exhaust area and, you know, mainly from the exhaust uh, pipe. And so I kind of went a little overboard on here, uh, but I, I just wanted to feel comfortable about this being safe. And, and this has actually worked out really well. Um, my only, uh, you know, my only complaint on this is I probably took a little too long to make the decision to pull the trigger on this piece. This piece was like a hundred some, I think it was about a hundred bucks. I really didn't want to spend that much, but um, I think it, it, w it worked out perfect. And then on this side, you can see I put some more hardy plank, uh, cement, cement board on the inside, hardy plank on the outside, just as another level of protection of heat. Um, on the inside, you can see here another grommet. This is just a like a cord grommet for a desk. I did on the outside as well. And then this is just some uh, insulation board uh, that I put on the outside. On the bottom, I put a piece of plywood, and then um, actually have a sheet, some sheet metal on top of that, and then this fireproof rubber mat. And the rubber mat was good to ensure that the generator is not sliding. Um, you know, it basically sits in place. You can see here, um, the door does close. Uh, it, it's a tight fit and I could push it back a little bit more, but uh, there's really no reason to. Um, like I said, the main area where it gets hot is back here. So I'm just kind of giving it some, some plenty of space back there. Um, so we'll go into a few other things. Uh, as you can see up here, I put a solar panel in. And the reason for this is to ensure that the generator's battery doesn't die, uh, doesn't drain out. And so this is like a trickle charger. And I just used some industrial Velcro under here. My, my goal was to not, again, make any unnecessary holes uh, in this. And so anywhere in the structure. And uh, part of that had to do with the, the concept of kind of exhausting the heat out of this. And you really need to create a vacuum effect uh, from what I've, I've read. And so by having a smaller exhaust on this side or a smaller vent inlet on this side, bigger exhaust on this side, it creates quite a bit of a vacuum in there. It works pretty well. Um, you can, you know, test that out by putting a piece of paper there um, on that vent. And so this is really the only other hole uh, this is where my power line, this is a direct burial line that goes back to the, um, uh, goes back to the breaker panel. And then you see my little solar uh, power going in there. And then if you look down here, you can see my little solar panel uh, plugs into the battery that's back there. Um, you know, one thing about this generator is a few things you need to do. You need to take the shipping braces off. You need to put two quarts of, almost two quarts of oil in. Uh, you need to make sure you connect the battery in the back because it's not connected. Sometimes it's partially connected, but you need to check it. Um, I'm running uh, 240 uh, volt setup. And then this is a, this is a plug I got. Um, the, the wire, the direct burial wire is 6.3, and this is the best fitting that I found for this scenario. I did have to take off a little bit with an oscillating tool at the bottom just so it sits nice and flush down here. And, um, and so that's that's mainly, and then I've got my ground uh, connection coming here, goes up, comes out that same path, and then uh, the ground um, rod is, is over there. Um, I think that's most about this part. I'm gonna continue uh, talking about the, the breaker panel. I wanted to just uh, kind of summarize a few issues that I ran into with, that will save some people some time. Um, this, uh, or is it, this idle control, I've seen people say just turn it off. Well, it kind of sucks because the generator is always like at full power and really loud. Um, obviously I built this enclosure for weather, but I also built it to keep the, uh, the noise down. Um, but this idle control is actually pretty useful. And, uh, if you don't have a, you know, say an AC running or a dryer or something like that, it actually quiets it down quite a bit. Um, anyway, so in order to keep this on, I had to adjust the throttle screw and, um, obviously this is upside down, but there is a, there's a screw or Phillips 
or somewhere along in, in here that adjusts this throttle rod. Yeah, I think it's right there. Um, you know, once you get the generator started and you put it on the, uh, the auto uh, idle on, you can adjust that screw and it, it will fix the issues that people were running into, um, which is essentially that you need to make sure that, I guess the throttle is at a certain level so that it didn't stall out. Um, why that adjustment needs to be made, I'm not an expert, but uh, that did resolve that issue and, and it's worth making that, ch that, that adjustment because it does uh, keep it a, a, you know quieter when it doesn't need to be as loud. Other thing I, I realize is this carburetor, I mean, this uh, regulator, um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure why it didn't actually have enough flow to begin with, but I did have to adjust this screw here. So this is actually two screws. You take the first one off, it's safety screw, and then underneath it, you can adjust there and it uh, allows more flow of natural gas in. And so I did have to adjust that a little bit. And then this component here, I tried running without it, but uh, it, it needs to be on there to get the right mix going and uh, gives you a little bit of adjustment without having to, you know, keep adjusting this. But, uh, you know, those were, those were some tips um, that, you know, things that I ran into in relation uh, to the natural gas. And then, um, you know, the fan, um, you know, having that uh, automatically turn on by just plugging into the generator. So when the generator's got power, uh, this is, you know, you know, start up. I am probably gonna put a heat sensor in here uh, that essentially will kill the generator if it gets too hot. Um, gonna have to figure out how to do that, but that's another project along with the remote starter uh, that I'll be looking at. Just a, another quick uh, video. I, I made this little platform Essentially, this is treated uh, two by four, and I put a little extra piece at the end here. Um, and there's a little bit of a gap in the in the front. Um, didn't want to have to pour concrete, so what I did is I, I built this out and made it match perfectly on some cheap uh, pavers. And so, uh, underneath there is some sand and gravel, and then uh, actually allow some area here to allow some water to come out and this area is you know turned into a mess for me working back here so much but my plan is to to put some gravel back here and um pavers and you know make it a little bit safer if i have to come out here and, and turn it on um if i don't get the remote start thing working um anytime soon um but yeah i think this was key uh you definitely want it on a platform uh you know similar to your acs and whatnot and uh you know, keeps the water out of it and, um, you know, makes it a little bit safer. Uh, probably helps with the weathering as well. All right, guys, this is my electrical panel. Um, I'm not a certified electrician, but I do feel comfortable working in, in uh, with electricity and panels and whatnot. Um, been doing it for a really long time. I, I don't recommend uh, that you do this unless you are working with a certified electrician um, or they're doing the work but I felt comfortable doing it. Uh, so, but definitely not um, suggesting that, that you should go out there and do this. But anyways, this is the uh, interlock kit that I got. And so this is 3D printed. I've got an old panel, so it was not easy to find uh, these on some of the commercial sites, but uh, this one works great. It serves one purpose, uh, to make sure that the main is not on when you have the generator feeding back into the panel. And so once you, turn off the main, you can push this up and the 50 amp circuit can be turned on. And my direct burial cable goes directly into the box and then plugs into there. And this uh, was my approach. I didn't need, a, I didn't uh, want to spend the money to have uh, an automatic transfer switch installed. Um, I also didn't like that you had to pick the circuits that you would use. Um, so the great thing about this is that all the uh, circuits in the house can be lit up. Um, my generator can support um, essentially pretty much everything in the house. Um, I probably wouldn't run the dryer at the same time I'm, I'm running uh, or starting an AC. Um, I probably wouldn't start both ACs at the same time, uh, but I 
really only need one AC uh, when an event happens like this. Uh, worst case, I can kind of flip back and forth if I need to, um, you know, so that I'm not taking the risk of them both starting at the same time. You know, potentially it could support starting them at the same time. I just, I don't want to push the generator that hard. Um, but anyways, I hope this video was useful. Uh, again, you know, you're probably looking upwards of, I don't know, maybe $10,000 to get a generator, Generac or whole home generator that's capable of supporting this level of power. Um, and I was not going to spend that. I wanted the ability to move this generator. I wanted the ability to move, work on the generator myself. And ultimately I spent with the warranty and everything and all the other pieces and parts, probably about $2,000. And so I see that as, you know, much more cost effective than dumping 10 grand. Um, I can take the generator with me if I, if I move, um, I can take the generator out and take it in for uh, maintenance. Uh, you know, if it, if it, if there's something wrong with it, um, it's a pretty simple generator. So I probably could fix it if there was a problem. Um, I can change its oil. I can, I can do the other uh, maintenance on it. It's got um, wheels that you can put on it and pull it out. So I really felt, you know, outside of the issue of, you know, maybe having to come out here and manually switch it during a storm, that this was the right approach for me. Um, you know, uh, here in, in uh, Houston, it gets pretty hot um, in the summer times and I have a CPAP and you know, it's just nice. Uh, last night the power went out for about three hours and uh, turned the generator on and, and uh, my whole street was pitch black, but my house, uh, the landscape lighting was on and I was able to sleep with my CPAP and my AC and my fan running and, uh, you know, it, uh, it was nice. So, um, you know, hopefully I get some use out of it. I think I will based on the history. Um, with, have often power outages, sometimes related transformers blowing, sometimes related to weather, uh, but, I, but I think it'll pay off. Anyways, I, I hope this helps. Uh, I saw a lot of these videos out there and, um, you know, I wanted to make one that kind of collectively put a lot of the information together. Um, you know, some, some of the other tips I have uh, figured out is uh, when, you know, connecting the uh, line uh, from the generator to your uh, regulator, uh, make sure you don't tighten that too tight where you've caught, caused the fitting inside to close up the connection. That'll give you some issues getting started. Um, you might have to adjust the, the regulator screw at the bottom. I, I, I did. Uh, I don't know why I did, but uh, it, was, it was an issue for me. Um, I did have a plumber kind of check all my connections at the same time that they were doing the gas line. And then, um, you know, the gas was really the only thing I, I didn't feel comfortable um, uh, running uh, that needed to be run off the meter. That was probably one of the most expensive uh, parts um, outside of the generator. If I had to do it again, I might have considered running the the uh, gas line closer to the breaker box and then putting the generator by the, the, the breaker box. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, the electrical line or the, the pipe, you know, it's almost a wash. Um, the nice thing about the electrical line is it was something I could do. I could, you know, trench it. I could um, connect it. Um, you know, it's just I didn't have to rely on the on uh, the plumber to, to do that with the gas line. So anyways, again, I hope this helps. Um, I'm going to put some links in the description that will show kind of different things that I purchased and where to get them. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously I'll, I'll respond to questions and whatnot if, if it helps anybody. Thanks for watching and uh, hope you guys are able to, to benefit from this video.